Alright, uh, welcome back to Stormworks Basics, career playthrough number um, 11. Alright, so the last time we uh, actually put our starter boat into the water and we went and we did a rescue mission. Um, worked out well, we rescued three um, stranded people, we got 6,000. So if we look at our monies, we're up to 25,000 now. Um, so let's go in, let's do some more quick improvements on our on our boat, and then we can go into... Um, we start to go into, um, you know, maybe doing some more rescues when they pop up. So let's uh, let's start to add some paint. Um, a lot of these boats that, you know, a lot of these creations really don't start to pop until you add paint. So um, I find. So let's start um, painting this up here. Uh, let's turn symmetry on. I'm not going to do the, uh, the paint bucket just because this this job's pretty quick. If I was using a huge ship, I might. I end up having to do a lot of edits with the paint bucket. Um, it starts painting, you know, the lower um, areas. Um, actually, let me do paint here, make sure. Yep, so that didn't come through. So um, let me see if I can do it without, as long as I'm not painting unwanted areas, I'm happy to use the paint bucket. Okay, so do a nice dark decking. Um, the bunch of these, um, the Coast Guard boat, these are kind of, I kind of took inspiration from our, um, they're, I don't know if it's aluminum or stainless steel. Um, so I have a couple colors here I'm working with. I kind of like this light color, but it's super light um, out in the world. Um, that's too dark. That's, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Let's, let's see what these look like in the world. Let's try that. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not painting any interior. Mostly just kind of obnoxious to me if it paints more, like, see, it's, uh, did it paint there? No. So actually, it's doing a pretty good job bucketing. Um, <clears throat> so let me try to think if I want to paint under the water line. So I might do, do, try to decide how, what colors I want on this. Let me, uh, take a little inspiration. I'm going to look up, um, some... Some Coast Guard rescue boats, and uh, that will help me kind of see what kind of color scheme I want. So it's often nice to be able to go through uh, some of the images and see what they look like. Um, just to give you a little inspiration of what you want. So like I have one that's kind of like this. Uh, it's a little bit different um, than mine. I don't have the, uh, the rubber inflatable around it, so I'm kind of just looking at some images and seeing what I like. Let me see. So let's try this color scheme. We can change it if we don't like it. Even might do, let's do, uh, change that to black. See if I like that and then I'll change the uh, waterline color to, I have this, uh, this oh, that's not the color. Let's do paintbrush and let's make the waterline this orange. See if I like this. Probably not going to like this all that much. We'll see. See how this turns out. So that's not that's not too bad actually. I kind of like that. Um, and then let's paint the bottom black. I just want to make sure I'm not painting the inside. It makes it hard to find stuff when it's painted all uh, black in there. Let me go back to black and oh, I clicked on that. Why are you not bucketing? Okay. Okay. Control. There we go. I was clicking Alt instead of Control. Still good there on not bleeding through colors. I think they must have improved this with the color pass. Okay. Want those rudders to be black. <coughs> yeah, we'll keep working here. So I'll paint pretty much all this underside black here. Looking pretty good. It's not bleeding. See, we got a little bleed through, which I'll fix. That's fine. Just gonna keep inside the engine compartment. Um, I'm gonna keep that white, just because uh, you know we're not gonna go in there, so it doesn't really matter um, what color it is, and it makes it a lot easier to find something if it's kind of have some high contrast. All right, so let's see. We're looking pretty good on colors here. <clears throat> That's not too bad. Um, might do some changes here at some point. Just my accent colors or something. I just want to get a little bit of color on this so that it's um, 
So it's not bland. You know, that this is when um kind of starts for me looking like a build is when you uh, start putting some color on it. So I usually kind of change how I'll often change um, <clears throat> different builds. I'll start coloring them a little bit earlier than others. Um, you know, it's like I was saying, I switch what I'm doing. I'll, I'll go from logic and spend a ton of time on logic to do more decorating. Um, if I start getting bored or frustrated by logic, I'll start doing some decorating or painting. Kind of break it up, do something different. Um, makes it so that you don't get too worn out doing one thing or the other. So these boats are pretty just stainless all over here, um, like this. I'm going to do black around the windows or a darker gray. Um, let me do some brush in here. And then I'll do stainless all up on these beams. Um, they don't stick out, so I'm not going to stainless the beams. I'll paint an interior color on the beams. So I kind of want this to look like stainless steel. Um, the roofs on these are also stainless, so it's very monochromatic, this design. On the one on the ones online that I'm seeing, so that's fine. Um, you know they're utility boats, so they're not you know not gonna have super fancy paint. But we'll put some detailing on there. We'll do some uh, paint blocks at some point. <coughs> we'll just start cutting through here and put some color on it. All right, so let's do the uh, top rails here all the same. Let me actually get some paint the bucket and try to get through that a little bit quicker. Okay. Then this back wall. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to do black for these or this dark gray. Uh, let's go dark gray. Yeah, that's a little bit less um, dramatic than the black. I think I'll do that for the windows too. On these grab rails. <coughs> All right, so we're starting to do pretty well here. Um, oh, I don't want. I think I want. Do I want the door silver? Yeah, the door is silver on some of the pictures, so I'll keep a silver uh, door. Do this. Uh, start coloring these in here. And don't. I might as well. Like, uh, try to decide how I want. I think I'll do the interior color different. I haven't done that yet, so. Now, see, like these, it would look weird, so I'm just going to do this um, this whole color for the windows. I don't really need those to be, um, you know, different colors. That looks pretty good to me. There we go. So that's coming along. I think that's starting to look really good. Yep, that's not too bad. Um, we'll see how the colors look in the world. You know, it's important to get it in there to see what they're actually going to look like. <coughs> All right, so looks pretty good for coloring. Let's go inside here. Yeah, see, this is why I don't like using the um, the paint bucket. I wanted this all white, and now it's it's not too bad. I'll just have to go through and manually change that one there, and then this one here. Yeah, so uh, just do a little bit of manual painting here to get this uh, back to white in here. It's it's a little bit picky, but I, I'm just doing it because it um, it's easier for me to find something if it's if it's a white color in there. And then this is where it got taken off of, so I'll recolor this here. And then we'll see how this looks in the world. Like that, um, this color here I was using, I like that color, but it's super light, so it almost looks white. In game, so it's um, you know, it's kind of a stainless color, but it um, looks super white in game, so it's uh, you can't really tell the difference. All right, so we added um, rope anchors on there, so that will help with docking. Looking pretty good. All right, so I think that looks good. So let's put it in the world and let's just drive it around for a second, see what it looks like. Of course, we're at, you know it's night, so it looks a little bit gray, a little bit monochromatic. Um, let me try the other color real quick. Let me do paint. We'll do that uh, replace color. Let's try this one. 
Okay, spawn that. I think that looks a little bit better. Yeah, that looks a little bit better to me. These, this still looks a little weird in the corners, so I might do something with that. I gotta, I'll try to come up with something. See, I don't think it's terrible, but all right. So that's pretty good. All right, let's recall this. Okay. All right, so I wanted to start. Um, let's see what else we could do on this. I moved this up. I think I re-indexed these. Um, so these should work in the new position. I moved the seat up. Um, we looked at that last time. I think I should have some painting to do here. So this is that same color. So I think I'm going to actually do like a brown, almost like a wood dash on this. I don't mean to do that at all. Um, do the brush. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do this like a wood, wood paneled color. <coughs> that will be a little bit... Um, better I think. We'll go like this, make sure we color all in there. Alright, that looks pretty good. Alright, let's pick a color for the seat. I think a uh, darker brown. The seat's good. Um, yeah, like see all that um, from the uh, from when we were doing the um, you know, the paid uh, bucket it was it was doing that to us so I, I kind of like that let's do I think black headrests black seats and then the orange um, this orange um, back seat backs maybe that's not bad um, I'm not in love with it but uh, it's, it's not too bad for right now I could change it I just want to kind of get some color in here um, Let's see what these darker walls will look like. That added up. Uh, they did the new paint stuff, so I think I can paint both sides. Yep, perfect. I like that. That's good. So I'm going to use the bucket again just because I have to get behind some of these surfaces. So I might have to go down below and fix it again. So let's go undo that so I can get at it. There we go. Try to get at this wall here. Okay, do this wall here. Make sure I'm not coloring anything underneath again. Yeah, a little bit. But that's all right. I can fix that. <clears throat> so I don't know if I'm gonna like this color, but once I put it in, I can do the swap and swap it to a different color pretty easily. So painting's not costing me anything. Need to color these windows in here. So that's looking pretty good here. Let's keep uh, filling the interior color here. All right, it's coming along nicely. It's pretty good. Let's do right here. Okay. So this is uh, so that's not bad. We'll leave that like that. Uh, we don't have symmetry on, so that's a pain. So that I don't want to do that. Let's go back. That's pretty hidden, so that's fine. <coughs> All right, so now we've got that in there. Um, I don't mind having the same deck color as outside. That doesn't bother me. Um, let's do a lighter roof color. That's pretty good. Um, let's just paint this up, oh, paint this this color here. And I think we're good for color um, for right now at least. Okay, so that's good for paint. Um, so we will save this for um, me. All right, Stormer's so Career 11. All right, so we're painted up. So let's do a little microcontroller work. So we had a little break from microcontroller for a second. All right, so let's look in here and let's start getting some of these gauges hooked up. Currently, I still have both engines controlled by one. Let's actually color some of this really quick. Additive, I want to do this here. I want to do, um, I 
I think I had orange down there, and then I want these to be red for zero, and I think I had this blue here for there, and that fixes that. We moved this up and moved the seat up. That's why that's different. Um, I'm actually going to come over here. I'm just going to make these two gauges here nuns um, till I get to them. That way I know that they're black and I can uh, mess with them later. So let's start working on hooking some of this up. So we have RPM port and starboard, temp port and starboard. Uh, we have, I have two fuel tanks there. I no longer need two fuel tanks. So I have, um, let me see, fuel, let me just change that to fuel gallons. Okay. And then what was the other one I could do? So a battery there. Um, let me see. I will try to figure something out for this one here um, for starboard fuel. Uh, remember, we went down to one fuel tank, so I'll figure something out for that. Um, maybe generator or something. Um, I also want to do something where um, currently to shut the engine off, it's this button instead of this one. So I need to fix that. So let's do that really quick. So um, presently, in order to um, turn on the engines, two is systems. So two is turning on the PIDs. Um, I don't want that. I want systems and um, engine start, stop. So I need an and. So let's go and. All right. So do uh, and. So we'll go uh, do the number two systems button. And I want to do my... Um, port engine starts off, which I believe is three. Let's see, where's three? Panel, uh, three off the panels right here for the starter. That goes there. This goes here. And then um, I'm trying to think where I could put this. So that's not in the way. That's not terrible there. Um, that's pretty good there. That works for me. That will turn on my PID. Um, set three and less than. So if the engine is, what is that? So if the engine is on, okay, that's just the starter. That's fine. I think we might add another and condition so that it also needs to have the um, systems on. So it makes systems kind of more of a <coughs> necessity here. Let's put another and in there. So this is just making it so that I also need the systems button on. So systems and um, three. Uh, and it's less than. So that, I just try to move these around and clean up some of these lines. They're not terrible, but I'm um, just trying to move them around a little bit, clean them up. Um, so that's pretty good. That sets, gets me going. I'm going to try to, let me move my panel up. Let me move. I know this is a little bit of a kind of silliness, uh, but I need to duplicate my engines so I can work them um, so I can uh, work them individually. So I kind of actually want to get started on um, duplicating my engines. So uh, as you can see here, we have alternator. That's we're going to duplicate that. We're going to duplicate coolant pump clutch and all of this. Um, what is this? This is no fly. All this needs to be duplicated as well. Um, some of it needs to be duplicated. Let's go like that. Let's copy all of this. Control C. And this is where it gets messy. So Control V. So I'm going to try to kind of line it up, make it a little bit easier to, um, using the grid, make it a little bit easier to reconnect everything here. Um, all right, so now we're going to have to make this huge. So I'm just going to go ahead, right ahead and make it max size for now. Um, we need to duplicate a ton of stuff. So let's start walking through it. So let's, um, if I move all this, I'm going to have to uh, completely reorganize it. So let's count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. So it's that, that's 3 by 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1, let me see. Wrong one, wrong one. One, two, three. That's going to be what we need. Okay. Probably less than that, but I'm not going to. I'll move, change it if I need to. All right. So let's start the duplication process. So, and renaming things. So, fuel. Uh, let's go uh, port. 
shift or control C. Okay, good. So port fuel, uh, port air, port RPS, port gear, port clutch, uh, port coolant pump, stern altimeter is fine, port engine. Uh, battery's fine. Alternator is going to be port. Uh, panel is fine. Panel is fine. PID read. Um, we should be able to get rid of that at some point. Okay. So we're in good shape here. So let's start to duplicate. So um, we need the um, we need a new number. We need an output. That's going to be star. We'll um, copy that. Star. Oh. Uh, air, starboard, starboard air, number output, fuel, it's going to be starboard clutch, okay, uh, starboard gear, oh, what did I just do, output, that's fine, starboard clutch, Output gear, gear. <clears throat> Make this an output starter. All right. Number output, alternator, alternator. Coolant pump. Cool pump. All right, where are we at here? What am I missing? Battery, don't need the port alternator, stern alternator. It looks like it, so let me actually, yeah, let's do that. Let me actually do this. A little bit pedantic, I know, but um, there we go. Okay, so let's go to properties and we'll shrink that. All right, so let's go in there and start finding all these. Um, so they're all sitting right here. So let's just grab the whole stack of them and drag them with us. And then they're here. Okay, so let's go. That's input I didn't label. So let's find that first and fix that input here. So gear output start. Okay, I don't know what this is. I don't may not need that. So let's get rid of it for now. All right, um, let's go in and start working on what we need to work on here. So coolant pump, alternator, starter, gear, um, starboard clutch, starboard fuel, starboard air. Okay, so let's grab the fuel in the air. Let's move that down here. That's an easy find. That's right here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so those are plugged in. Let me just match them up to up here. Okay. That just helps me find things. Um, let's grab these greens, drag them down. All right, so let's see what we have here. This is greater than four. That's got to be our clutch. Um, let's see what we have here. Okay, if channel three is between 20 and 120, that's going to be our coolant. I believe so, coolant. Yeah, it's going to be a coolant. That's for temperature. For our starboard al um, alternator, is going to go there. Starboard alternator. Okay. I don't know where I have those sitting, but they're a little bit tighter in. Right there is good. Okay, a little bit further out. I know. I'm a little bit picky on this stuff. Just makes it easy for me to zoom down and it looks the same. I can easily find it. All right, so now we need to start connecting stuff up. So what I like to use is a um, composite. Oh, let me see. Let me just type it in correctly. That will help. All right, so let's do a composite um, switch box. All right, and this is just to move it. So this is the off signal. So we're going to use the off signal. So what do I need? I need. Um, I'm going to need information from the panel. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the information from the panel and put it here. Um, I'm going to probably be a little annoying here and clean up a little bit. I like to try to keep this as clean and tidy as possible. 
just it makes it so much easier to not have to look at the mess of um, it's clean and tidy here. You know, it, it gets it gets a little bit confusing and daunting if you have a ton of stuff everywhere. So as you can see, this allows me to clean it up a little bit. Um, as you can see now, it makes one line. It's just easier to see what's going on. Um, and I'm going to drag this all the way down here. And since this is in the uh, off channel, I don't need to switch that. It will just carry through. And then that will let me do that. Um, all right. So that's not terrible there. Then these are, what do we have here? All right. So we need to change some numbers. So if you remember, um, this is our, where is our, that's a throttle. So these are our throttle settings here. So we need to change them. That's our seat. So um, if we remember, 13 was increased throttle on port. So 14 is going to be increased pro, uh, throttle on starboard. 15 should go to 16. 15 should go to 16. And then 17 is the zero, I believe. 17, zero. 17 is our zero. Um, we want the same seven. Actually, we can we can carry it through. Uh, that's fine. It'll still be 17. Um, two and three here. Two is going to be our um, our system power, so that's fine. We want to keep that what it is. Three is not going to be three anymore. That's going to be four. That's going to be our starboard starter, and we need to connect that. Okay, good. So let's. Um, Again, I'm going to be annoying here and make a couple more of these just because I want to clean this up so that I can tell what's going on more more easily. So as you can see, this just is for cleaning sake, uh, me doing this where I can uh, easily kind of stack these up and I can see right where they're going. And as you can see, it took out all those splayed lines and making them much cleaner like that would do um, and like this would do. Makes it a little bit easier for me to see what's going on once I once I know they're connected correctly. All right, so let's see. What is all this? Okay, so this is all screw, screwy looking because I just raised everything up. So I'm gonna raise, start pulling things back down here. So let's go down a little bit there. All right, that's better there. It's a little bit tighter looking. All right. So we're starting to get connected here for our engines. All right, so we need to add in a system. So let's let's try this. Um, I need seat here, so I'm going to take another um, composite switch box. I'm going to go from the seat, and that's going to go right here. And then I'll move these in. And we'll connect the three from the seat. So this is what allows us to do both the um, seat controls and the um, and do it from the um, dash itself. All right. So as you can see, that's much cleaner now. I can follow lines. Uh, they're not crisscrossing like crazy. That just helps a little bit for me to visualize it and quickly find a problem. If there's a problem, I know what I need to look at or where I need to look at. This is kind of a disaster, but whatever. Um, you know, I can get really annoying like this but um, all right so let's see um, what I want to do here all right so what we let's let's look at our boat and remember how it functions let's actually start connecting this stuff oh um, I need to add a composite node all right so a composite node that we're missing here is this uh, port engine I need a port a starboard engine so that would be a composite input composite input star Engine, uh, not engine, engine. Okay, there we go. Starboard engine. All right, um, that should be up the top again. Let me just grab it. There we go. And then we should see one sitting here, unassigned. I believe it's this here. Yeah. So reading three, three. Uh, if it's reading a number off the channel three, that's going to be our temperature. Um, one and two have to do with air and fuel, so that would be for stoichiometry. We'll we'll supercharge this, these motors eventually. That will give us more speed. Um, if we need more speed, we probably don't. So we could actually shrink the engines and supercharge them if we wanted to, to get more power out of smaller engines. But you know, we can have these big lumps that are easier to cool. So we might just stay with these big lumps. Um, all right, so this should be connected up. Let's go play with it and see what I can do. 
Um, so the seat. All right, we're gonna have to work on. So let me show you. Let's go back to the boat. Let's actually just make this work the way we want it. Let's start connecting it, and then I'll play with it in a moment. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna rotate it. I want this side facing starboard. Um, that's just because all this stuff is the port stuff, so it's gonna be on the port side of the starboard stuff there. It's just gonna make it so the lines aren't crisscrossing again, so that we can more easily and readily see what's going on here. Um, so right here we should have starboard fuel. Yep, we do. Because fuel, this is going to be our um, this will be our air. This will be our coolant pump. Okay. This will be our clutch, starboard. This will be our alternator. Um, let's see. That will be our gear. This will be our starter, power starter. Let's see, I sound like a pirate. Keep saying R instead of our. Okay, so we need to look at composite. We need to bring in the starboard engine into composite. We also need a um, RPS for the um, starboard side. So we'll add a. I, actually, I don't uh, do I need to turn on. Whatever I'll make, I'll make one. We we have an extra one that we don't need for something, but this is gonna be um, starboard RPS. Okay. Go back up here again. It should keep ended up in the same spot here. All right. So let's look here. We have um, port RPS on the top, and so we need to connect all that up where the where that goes. So um, it's right under this less than here, 2.5. All right, where is less than 2.5? All right, so if, if constant number is less than 2.5, so this is where our RPS goes in. So there's a number of places we need this here. So we need this, um, we need it to go to here for the 2.5 figure. We need it to go um, all the way over here to the um, PID. We need the RPS to also go to this greater than there. So it's just those three places. And so we'll do the same over here. So it goes to the less than. I'm holding control again to do multiple clicks. Goes here to this PID, and then it goes to this greater than there. This one's kind of all over the place, but um, I'm not bothered by it. All right, so let's update that. Let's grab uh, this node here. Where did it appear? Here it is. This is going to be our hour. Um, starboard RPS. All right, so that should hopefully function. Let's start it up and let's go see if we can um, get a nice start on this. So we want to do, um, so we'll do master power systems, start the port, port is on. So let's actually uh, increase our thrust. And as you can see, it's turning us, that's what we want. That means just the port screw was on. Okay, let's spawn it again. It's probably charging me money every time I do this. I should take this into test after this. But, um, okay, so start systems, port start. Okay, we get no start on that. So let's um, let's take this and let's save this. We'll do career 11. And let's quickly go over to the test world. Um, just make it a little easier. I can go in third person to see if the screw is actually turning. All right, test. We we'll also go daylight. See how this color scheme looks to us. Okay, let's open it up. All right, so there it is. Color scheme is a little pale, but um, you know we can see if we uh, like it later. All right, I, I like the interior colors, are nice. That's working for me. These headrests I don't like. I'm gonna have to decide what I wanna do with that. Um, this needs paint there, just notice. Okay, so um, master power systems, port start stop, should only function the port. There we go. Okay, that's fine. Let's try to start the starboard. Starboard does not appear to start. If I go up on the starboard, it does not as well. Okay, so let's look at that. Why is that doing that? 
First, let's make check connections. So we have um, the starter for starboard is connected. Okay, let's check the um, make sure my numbers are correct. So that should be four for starboard start stop. Okay, these here I need to make sure that I remember to put these on pushes, not toggle. That is, so that should be push push. These should be uh, push 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 push. This should be um, push. This should be toggle. Okay. All right. So that's fixed. Um, let's look in here. Why is my starboard engine not starting? Is the question. All right. So let's go down to starboard here. <coughs> All right. So I know why already. Probably. Uh, maybe not. Okay, so let's look at the starter component here. If I can find it. I didn't connect the starter is why. They're still sitting right up here. So gear and starter haven't been connected yet. That would explain it. All right, so let's look at here. Um, so this is all our start conditions here. So let's go up and see where I connected that. So starter, I just put it under and, and it goes to this and here, the last last end that goes down to um, not okay so this is the last end that goes down to not and then I want to um, yeah I recompressed all this let me decompress some of this here did a lot of compression here there we go let's just go like that all right let's go back where did I put those right here okay so starter should be here and it should go off of uh, this one I believe yeah it should be this one Let's go like that. That's our start. Our gear is, let me find the gear. I think it's here. Um, yep, if this is less than zero, give me the gear. Perfect. Okay. Update that. Let's try this now. This should go. Let me uh, do this. Let me move it like that. Okay, let's spawn it. Make it a little easier for me to get to. All right, so this should work. So we have um, systems on, uh, or master power systems. Port starts, starboard starts. They should be synced by default. Yep, they're synced by default. We have two screws turning. All right, so that's working nicely. All right, so that was that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna work on, let's look at side. All right, we're gonna work on our sink. So the way that, um, you have this in a lot of boats where, let me paint something here really quick. Um, to, to, to paint. Okay, that's the wrong color, there we go. Okay, so um, you have this in a lot of boats where you can use one throttle to uh, run both throttles essentially so you're syncing them so they usually sync off the port so this will allow us to use just the port to control our our um, you know our throttles our you know both throttles um, if we desync it if we press this button and we leave it selected that's going to allow us to control one screw and the other independently so let's get into that so that's actually pretty simple um, it's going to mostly just be a um, going to be a bunch of switch boxes here. Um, actually, we could probably do it. Let me see what I want to do. Let's see what I can do here. I was going to do it maybe a... Um, I could do it at each, each value that I need, or I could do it um, by actually switching the composite. Um, but I think I'm going to do it at the value at the values. So, um, so what you would do here is, um, let's see, I think I'll switch it at the PID. Let me make some space here on the starboard side. Push this out more. I'll have to clean up some of that later. Um, I'll clean it up now just so that I it's not in my way. I'll just use pluses to move uh, this and looks you know make it look straight like that. And this is RPS, and that can go there. Okay, 
that just cleans it up a little bit for me. Um, and then we can use ores to clean up even more if I need to. I'll take an ore and I'll clean, do some cleaning here. Um, just makes it a lot easier to find stuff when when um, your lines are straight like this and they're not crisscrossing like crazy. As you can see, that's already you know much easier and cleaner for me to see what's going on. Like even that, that helps. Um, all right, so what I want to do is when I get to the PID, I want to be able to e either have this value come in here. Uh, what's that? Because number five, not that value. Um, I either want to have my numerical switch box number here, or I want, um, or I want the number from uh, the port side. So that will make it so that my port is controlling my starboard um, engine. So what I will do is I'll actually keep that for now um, because I need it. So um, I'm going to take this as add block and up here where the um, I'm trying to think if we want to do it there or do it there. Hmm. Challenging. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's PID read. Let's go there. And then let's take this and drag it down and go to the switch box. So the when we turn it on, actually we want it the opposite way. We want it, um, you know, it's going to sync default and then we're going to desync it. So let's change this to here. And then when we desync it, it will allow us to control from the starboard side like that. Okay, we'll leave that out just so that I can um, leave that out just so I can do that. So that's good. What so what that's going to do? I know it seems convoluted. I'm talking to myself a lot, but um, so what? So currently, what happens is our RP, desired RPS comes through the PID, and it was going to both engines. Now it's only going to the port. So when I have the engine synced. I also want that number to go to the PID for um, for the starboard engine. And then when I want to run the starboard engine independently, I would press a button, it would switch it, so now I'm manually controlling it. So I'm putting that there. Um, and so what is, let's do that real quick. Um, let's take another OR block here. Control V. Alright, so my sync is going to be I believe, let's look at, what is it, um, I think it's 18, so I haven't done that yet. So 18 is going to come off of my um, panel. So we have a panel here, so we can feed in off of this um, composite switch box here. Um, and we're going to grab a uh, read on off. We'll hook it to there. We'll make that 18. 18 is our button for our desync to desync our motors. And we'll put this over here. All right, so this is going to connect here. This is going to move in. This is going to move over. And that's good. And then this one can move one block over. And now we're cleaned up and we look nice. All right, good. All right, so we've already, we've synced how the engine runs. But um, the clutch is automatic. We don't have to worry about the clutch. The clutch is uh, the clutch is 100% based on. Um, yeah, let me see. Is it is the numeric switch box greater than zero? Okay. So yeah, I do need to do uh, this as well because um, it's going to. Hmm. Let me see. All right. So. So let's go. Try to see what I want to do here. So initially, I thought I could do it over here, but I think I'm going to do it right at the clutch. Give me a second. So the way the um, so the way the way the clutch works is essentially if the RPS is greater than four, um, and the numer the number of the numerical switch box is greater than um, zero, as in we're going forwards it's going to give us poor clutch. So I should be able to, I'm trying to think where I could switch this from. This is always forward. So I don't think I need to. 
yeah, so I don't need to um, do that, but what I do need to do is, mm -hmm. I would need to go, well, this goes up here, okay, that goes there. I think I need to feed off of this over here is what I need. Yeah, I need to feed off of this over here, this numerical switch box here. And then that's going to allow me to run the greater than here. So that's not too bad. Again, it's it's just, you know, working through, you know, some of these problems. Um, grab this and make this there. So if that's greater than zero. So that's allowing me to read off of, um, that's reading off the same thing so that I can switch it. All right, so that's going to make sure my clutch works. The coolant pump, um, all the coolant pump does is if, let's see, starboard engine. So if the temperature of the starboard engine is great, is between 20 degrees and 120 degrees, um, and and the starter is not on, um, it's going to turn on the um, coolant pump. So that's fine. Alternator, again, it's reading off the battery, um, I, which I need to plug in. I didn't plug in the battery yet. So it's reading off the battery, and um, as long as the battery is discharging, it's going to connect. So let's um, so let's find the battery. I need to do that. So I can delete this OR here. I want a plus. Plus allows me to kind of move things as well. So where's battery? That's the number. Battery's right here. So let's go to battery. Okay, this is going to be a long one. Sorry, just um, trying to get this all done up. Okay, so that goes battery right there. And then that cleans it up pretty nicely there. Okay, go like that. That's even better. All right, so now the battery's connected. So all that's connected. So let's try this. All right. All right, so the desired result is I should be able to control both props um, def by default together. Then if I want to, I can desync them and then control them independently. So let's work on this. So we'll do master power, systems, port engine starts, starboard engine starts. I'm gonna use my keyboard. Start to increase my thrust. You'll see they both go. Okay, good, so both are going. They're uh, both the same. Let's zero. Okay, now I want to control these independently. So I'm going to go desync, thrust to port. I'm going to control just my port, so only my port should turn on. So let's see, are we turning sideways? Okay, we. It's hard to tell. Yep, okay, so see, our starboard screw is stopped, and we're going about half as fast as we were before, so that's a good indicator. All right, so now I'm gonna tr put my starboard screw in reverse. We can hear the clutch going on that, and there we go, we're spinning in reverse. And so as you can see, this is allowing us to do asymmetrical thrust to turn with the two screws. So that's why you'd wanna do this, is the ability to, um, you know, do uh, asymmetrical maneuvering like this. So it's not something you'll use often, but um, you know, like as you can see, we're not using the rudders at all, but we can turn the boat. And if I did full rudder, we would turn the boat even faster. So that helps you with uh, maneuvering, especially close to a dock. All right, so let's go back. We'll sink them. Probably here stalling. The starboard screw is automatically gonna start to try to go forwards, theoretically. Okay, it's not, so let's see why that is. Huh. So I'm curious why this is doing this. Let's zero them. Okay. So the port should be controlling both. It is, okay. Zero them. Desync. do that. Okay, it just takes a while for that other one to um, start to uh, turn. Go zero. Alright, I'll put my um, put my port thrust in reverse here. 
So I think it's it's problem with the clutch that's doing this, where it's um, so we're going backwards just on port. So if I desync, it should put that starboard screw in reverse, but it's not. It's putting it forwards. So I okay, you know what it was? I didn't sync. I didn't sync the gearing. That's what it was. Okay, so I have to sync the gearing. It's not putting it in reverse gear is the problem. So when I manually put it in, it, it, will, it will put it in reverse, but when I'm syncing, it's not. So I need to sync the reversers. Okay, so that's not a problem. Um, let's find... Let's find the... Okay, where is this? Okay, so um, right here it shows if up-down counter is less than zero, um, go port gear. All right. So here it's going. Where is gear? So now it here is here is um, if this up down counter is less than zero, use that gear. Well, we don't want to do that. We want to use this up down counter here. Um, so I'm going to actually loop that back through. We will go. We'll take this here. It's going to be messy, I know. And we'll loop that back. So if this is less than uh, zero, give me a gear change. Okay, so let's try this now. And see if this functions the way we want it. Okay, so now I can independently control them, most likely. Alright, so we're going to keep them synced. We're going to start using, we just use the seat throttle. Alright, we're going together. That's good. Alright, now I want to desync them. When I desync, uh, this should be zero on the starboard side. Okay, it still sounds like it's synced, maybe. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so I'm having problems just desyncing it on the move. So let's put the starboard screw in reverse. Okay, I can't. Very interesting. Here, can I put the port screw in reverse? I can. Alright, so it still have something with the gear there. I will check this in a moment here. And then once we figure this out, I'll end up the video. Alright, so we just did this. Alright, so if... Okay, so this is screwing this whole situation up here. Okay, so let's do this. If this is less than zero gear, um, let's do a numerical switch box here. Let's do a numerical switch box here. Let me see. Okay, so we want to put a numerical switch box here to, to dictate the gear. So let's actually go gear over here, less than there, put the gear there. Okay. And we want to do a numerical switch box of either this or it will be this. And then we'll go if um, like that. I know it's a mess. But... Um, that's going to put us here for, um, and then we want, making a big old mess here with this part, but I'll clean it up later. All right, so. Okay, so if this is negative, or this, see, this is the problem. The, oh, I know why this isn't working. Okay, let's just X that. I know what's up. Okay, so by the time we get to this condition here for the PID, we're no longer reading the appropriate, um, we don't get any negative numbers anymore. I've turned this around, that's all positive going to the PID. So I need to do a numerical switch box here. Um, we need to read, what is this? Why is that there? Okay, I don't want that anymore. Um, this reads here, so if this is less than that, switch the gear. So we actually want, if this there, switch the gear, we want to go right from the gearing. So we're going to find where our gear is here, right here. 
Okay, that's better. Um, if that is done like that, let's move this. Let's move this. Let's go like that. And then I can move this like that. And then uh, that's better. This is okay. So this is turning out better here. So this uh, switch box here, and we need to trigger this switch box, which is going to be from um, do another or. Where is the one hitting this one? Miracle switch box or is there? Is 18. So let's do an or. Again, this is just me trying to clean up. Um, that's why I'm moving all these around, and it's you know, it just makes it a lot easier to find stuff if you clean it. All right, so that can go there. This can go uh, like that. This can go like that. This here can go somewhere. It's going to be probably still a mess, but um, let me see. I'm going to do two bends on this. Like that. Okay, that fits there. Um, this can go in like there. Okay, I moved that, so that should go back. This should go like this. This should go like that. Okay, good. Um, and then this here, that's fine. I just need to put a... I'm going to root it around maybe. I'll, I'll leave it the way it is. So this should work. All right, so we needed that negative signal to get the gear in, right? So let's update this. Let's spawn it. And let's see if this is right. So I should be able to... Um, all right, so let's go. All right, so I want to desync the engines, go full throttle in the um, port engine. Should be able to sync, and it should also kick up the starboard and match it. It is okay. I'm gonna desync it. The starboard should should go down. It does, as you can see, the starboard is killing, is dying off. We're slowing down. I'm gonna zero them both, which it will zero them both, which is what we want. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the port um, screw in reverse. This is where we have an issue is because I was going from the wrong node for the reverse. All right, we're starting to go reverse. You see we're turning because we're only pulling the port reverse. All right, now I'm going to desync. And you can see my starboard is now in reverse. So we're in business now. All right, so as you can see, the uh, stern is lifting out of the water. So what we can do for that is we can use these stability fins. Um, I need to add in a system so that... Um, it's pretty simple. Do it off the altimeter on the stern, um, and so we'll put a couple of conditions that if we're in reverse and the stern is up, it will reverse those fins because the fins are actually helping it lift the uh, stern out of the water. Um, so we want to essentially reverse the fin signal. So we'll work on that next video. All right? Thank you for watching.